Welcome. I'm Eric Carrera, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of the American Chemical Society. Students of, of chemistry, and it seems to me, especially organic chemistry, have at one time or another been told that the pK of water is 15.7. Indeed, there have been extensive discussions in the scientific literature, and yet it's a misconception that still persists. Fortunately, I'm here today with Professor Todd Silverstein of Willamette University in Salem, Oregon, and Professor Tom Niles of Grand Rapids Community College in Michigan. We're gonna discuss just this issue and basically set the record straight, underscoring that the pK of water is 14.0. Todd, would you like to give us some background on this discussion? Sure. The pK of water has been determined to be 14.0 by both experiment and also by thermodynamic derivation. Unfortunately, an erroneous thermodynamic derivation by Bronsted back in 1928, along with an erroneous calculation from an excellent 1960 experimental paper in the Journal of American Chemical Society, JAX, concluded that the value was actually 15.7. This then led many organic chemists to accept the incorrect value, along with the incorrect value of minus 1.7 for the pKa of the aqueous proton. Following up on the 2014 Meister et al. paper in Helvetica Chemica Acta, and also the 2017 Silverstein and Heller paper in the Journal of Chemical Education, we wanna to talk today about the historical roots of this error and discuss some thermodynamically sound corrections. Tom, I wonder if you could please tell us a little bit about the history behind the claim that the pK of water is 15.7. Sure. In 1928, Johannes Bronsted postulated that there could be two different values for the pKa of water. One value was a conventional thermodynamically sound equilibrium constant, the Ka of water, which we show on the slide, in which the activity of water is used and assigned its correct value of unity because it is the solvent in a dilute solution. Bronsted called the second constant the rational acidity constant, which we distinguish with an asterisk which is Ka star, in which he included a molar concentration of water. But Bronsted stated that this molar concentration, quote, does not possess an explicit value, unquote, and thus it's not possible to calculate a value for Ka star or for pKa star. Now, by 1937, Bronsted seemed to have given this problem further thought and gave the conventional values precedence over the untenable rational values. Specifically, in his 1937 textbook, Physical Chemistry, Bronsted defined an autoprotolysis constant in water, KH2O, being equal to the molar concentration of H plus times the molar concentration of OH minus, which is not only equal to our modern autoionization constant, KW, but also, by analogy to his discussion of the ionization of dilute acids, this is equal to the Ka of water. Mathematically, Bronsted stated here that the pKw equals the pKa of water. In addition, Bronsted included only the conventional values in a table in this textbook that lists the pKa values of several well-known acids. Thus, nine years after presenting both the rational and conventional values, Bronsted seems to have set aside the rational values in favor of the activity-based thermodynamically correct conventional values. Interesting. Todd, so how did Bronsted's concept of rational values make it back into the modern chemical literature? Well, in their influential 1960 paper in JAX, Ballinger and Long determined experimentally the pKa of methanol to be 15.5. And they stated in their abstract that, quote, the relative acidities of methanol, water, and ethanol are found to be in the ratio three to two to one for the solvent water, unquote. These two conclusions combine to support the rational pKa of water, 15.7. However, Ballinger and Long fell into a thermodynamic pitfall that led to their erroneous conclusion that methanol is more acidic than water. We carefully explain Ballinger and Long's error in our 2017 JCAMED paper but here I'll give a brief summary. 
Ballinger and Long measured the equilibrium constant for the deprotonation of methanol by hydroxide. As we see on the top of the next slide, they reported the equilibrium constant for this reaction as 0 0.029, thus proving, as we see on the bottom of the slide, that because the reaction was non-spontaneous, water must be a stronger acid than methanol, which has a pKa of 15.5. So therefore, water's pKa must be less than 15.5. As we see in the next slide, Using this KEQ of 0 0.029 and the pKa of methanol, we can calculate the pKa of water to be 14.0, which is Bronsted's conventional value. Unfortunately, Ballinger and Long didn't stop there because previous literature on these methanol NaOH reactions had employed mole fraction concentration units. So we see in the next slide that Ballinger and Long converted their KEQ of 0 0.029 to mole fraction units. And using this KEQ, this mole fraction KEQ of 1.6, Ballinger and Long then concluded that methanol is 60% more acidic than water. And here we show that using their pKa of 15.5 for methanol, they then calculated a pKa star of water of 15.7. The problem with Ballinger and Long's conclusion is that their KEQ of 0 0.029 for the methanol hydroxide equilibrium showed definitively that water is a stronger acid than methanol with its pKa of 15.5. And this supports the 14.0 pKa for water and not the 15.7 value. But more importantly, as we see from the next slide, that in order to calculate the 15.7 pKa value, Ballinger and Long divided the Ka of methanol, which employs molality concentration units, by the mole fraction KEQ 1.6. This is thermodynamically invalid. You can't combine two different concentration unit KEQs in a single expression. So Ballinger and Long's conclusion in their abstract that methanol is more acidic than water, as well as their pKa star value of 15.7 are both thermodynamically and experimentally untenable. Your explanation makes perfect sense. So then, so then how is it that Ballinger and Long's claim made its way into popular use? Well, in 1965, Cram was the first organic chemistry textbook author to list in his pKa table the incorrect rational values. And he was also the first of many to cite Ballinger and Long's 1960 Jack's paper as experimental support for these values. Since that time, almost all other organic chemistry textbooks authors have used the 15.7 and negative 1.7 pKa values. No doubt the towering influence of Cram um, made that possible. So when did an appreciation of this problem arise in the literature? Well, in the 1980s and 1990s, there was a robust back and forth in the literature with organic chemists resolutely defending the 15.7 and minus 1.7 pKa values for water and the proton respectively, and pretty much all others insisting on the activity-based 14.0 and 0, 0.0 values. But the two fairly recent papers, the 2014 Meister et al. and the 2017 Silberstein and Heller papers, they were the first to show conclusively that A, not only are the 15.7 and minus 1.7 pKa values thermodynamically untenable, but also B, Ballinger and Long's experimental results actually support the correct 14.0 and 0, 0.0 pKa values. I wonder how did the chemistry community react to the publication of these two papers? Well, the organic chemistry community has slowly been moving toward adoption of the correct pKa values for water and the aqueous proton. I'll give you a few examples. The eighth edition of March's Advanced Organic Chemistry, the 2020 edition, has the correct values tabulated. The Journal of Organic Chemistry has begun publishing articles that use the correct values. The American Chemical Society Division of Organic Chemistry has corrected the pKa values for water and the proton in the three PA, pKa tables that they curate, Bordwell, Evans, and Williams. And the newest edition 
Of several organic chemistry textbooks have corrected the pKa values, for example, Carty and Volhart and Shore, and also quite a few organic chemistry textbook authors have announced that they will tabulate the correct conventional pKa values in their next editions. For example, Clayton, Wade, Maitland Jones, and several others. So that's good news. We're moving in the right direction. But let me ask you a question. Why is it, why is it so important to get the pKa of water correct? You know, some would say, what's the big deal? Well, we'll give you a couple of answers to that excellent question. Um, the scientific enterprise accommodates discussion and rectification of honest misunderstandings. In the case of the pK of water and the proton, the implications go beyond whether one uses the number 14.0 or 15.7, because there are fundamental implications to the basic tenets of thermodynamics. Regarding the pKa values for acids, these are always determined using molality or more often molarity concentration units and the one molal standard state. Using this standard state, we have shown that the pKa of water is 14 and the pKa of the aqueous proton is zero. On the other hand, using mole fraction concentration units and the mole fraction equal one standard state for water, one gets the rational pKa star of water of 15.7 and the aqueous proton minus 1.7. But in order to use these latter values, one would have to convert all the other acid pKa values to this mole fraction standard state in order to make any valid, valid comparisons. Otherwise, you're going to be using apples to oranges comparisons. And it's not only the pKa values that would be affected. The equilibrium constant values, the KEQ, also delta G naught value and the E naught value for all reactions in which water is a solvent and is also a reactant or a product would be affected because all of these terms are interdependent and based on the common standard state in which the solvent, water, has an activity of one, or unity. The key point to realize is that the 14.0 value for the pKa of water can be calculated in various ways from the thermodynamic and electrochemical values currently tabulated. On the basis of accepted thermodynamic principles, the 15.7 value cannot. And don't forget that water is just one of many solvents. So we would need to change the standard states for all solvents and then reevaluate the KEQ value and the delta G naught value for all reactions in which the solvent is also a reactant or a product. In addition, students do get confused if they learn that the pKa of water is 14 in one class but are then told in another class that the pKa of water is 15.7. When they eventually learn the correct use of activities, Henry's law and Raoult's law to determine equilibrium constants, they find out that the pKa of water is 14 after all. There is also the not so in, insignificant issue that the, if the pKa of the aqueous proton is negative 1.7, then nitric acid with a pKa of negative 1.4 would have to be characterized as a moderately weak acid. And we know that it's always treated as a strong acid. So for all of these reasons, based on the rigorous supporting arguments provided by Meister et al. in 2014 and Silverstein and Heller in 2017, Tom and I wish to applaud the organic chemistry community as it moves to accept and employ the correct conventional pKa values for water and the proton, which are 14 and zero, respectively. It looks like we've reached a natural end to uh, the discussion. Um, let me thank you, Tom and Todd, um, for the thoughtful presentation and the engagement. Um, without question, you've done a great service to the community, and I'm glad that Jax is a part of this. And I might add a great service, not just to the undergraduate community of students, but to all of us who remain students of chemistry uh, for life. Uh, this kind of presentation sets the record straight on an important topic and an important misconception. And it's about time uh, people start waking up that, it, that it's just wrong. Um, and it does provide a priceless educational tool. I'm hoping it serves as the inaugural workshop or discussion of many more to come on a variety of other topics um, that serve us to keep us um, honest on what are fundamental issues 
um, in chemistry and our understanding of this wonderful science um, that we play with on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric.